Hello, everybody, and welcome to Senor Hayes Spanish Course, Lección Nueve. Um, so the last couple lessons, we've really learned about some different parts of speech. We've did some a group of nouns. Uh, we know a bunch of verbs. We learned about prepositions. And uh, so today we're going to be doing adjectives. We're really getting just, you know, all the major parts of the sentence in. And I know our vocab has been blown up lately, so that's a good thing. But also it can be kind of difficult just to have so many new words. Well, you know, don't go crazy trying to learn every single word that I say. Uh, just, you know, watch the videos, maybe go over the vocab list, and, um, you know, you don't have to know every single one. Just be able to recognize, I would say, about 80% of the words. So you don't have to know all the words by heart, but at least if you hear me say the word, you should know more or less what it is. I'd say about 80% of the time. So if you're at that point, great. If you're not there yet, you maybe want to just review the vocab list. And I'll go ahead and link here to the vocab list that we've done so far, just in case you uh, want to go over them. But uh, let's get started with today's lesson, adjectives. All right, so Spanish adjectives. So what is an adjective? Uh, you may know already, but if you don't, adjectives are words that describe nouns. So a noun is a person, place, or thing. And adjectives are the words that describe what kind of person, place, or thing. So for example, blue eyes. Eyes are a thing. What kind of eyes? Blue eyes. A small mouse. What kind of a mouse? A small mouse. Or a sweet cake. Cake is a noun. What kind of cake? Sweet cake. Uh, the girl is pretty. So what kind of a girl? A pretty girl. Those are all adjectives. Now, in, adge in Spanish, adjectives must agree with the noun that they modify in both gender and number. So that's different than English. In English, it doesn't matter blue eye, blue eyes, blue dress. It's always blue. But in Spanish, they're going to change depending on what kind, what, you know, the noun that they modify. Let's look at some examples here. El niño, that's a boy. So the boy, well, we would say, if we want to say a small boy, we would say, we use the word pequeño, los niños, plurals, plural, then we would use pequeños with an S at the end. For la niña, the girl, we'd be using pequeña, meaning the small girl, but uh, with an A at the end. And with las niñas, it's pequeñas with an AS at the end. So it's pretty simple. It's the same endings that we've used for everything. O, singular masculine, OS for plural masculine. A is for feminine, AS is for plural feminine, and there are some exceptions to that, and we'll see them later. So here we go. Some adjectives don't change with gender, but they all have at least a singular or plural form. So sometimes you'll see they won't change. So, so el ojo azul, los ojos azules, la sabana azul, the blue sheet, the blue, bed, the blue bed sheet, or las sabanas azules, the blue bed sheets. So as you can see, there's a singular and a plural form, azul if it's singular, azules if it's plural, but it doesn't matter if it's masculine or feminine. El ojo azul, the blue eye, masculine. La sabana azul, the blue bed sheet, feminine, it's azul. So only it only changes in terms of singular or plural. Adjectives in Spanish usually come after the noun. So this is a big change as well. So we have blue eyes in English. That means blue is the adjective. It comes first. In Spanish, it's, it's flipped. Los ojos azules. The eyes blue. The, so it's the adjective comes right after the noun. It modifies. El ratón pequeño. The small mouse. Pequeño comes after the word for mouse. And then for sweet cake, el pastel dulce. So dulce is the word for sweet. It's the adjective. It comes after the noun. And then la niña es bonita. The girl is pretty. On that one, it works the same as in English. All right. So we're going to take a look at the colors here. So this is, um, you probably know a lot of these. They're pretty common in English. But we'll just go over them. And there may be some you don't know. So red is rojo or rojos, roja, rojas depending on the noun that it's modifying. Green, that's one of those words that do, you know, doesn't have f masculine or feminine, 
but it's verde if it's singular and verdes if it's plural. Verde and verdes. So pink, pink has two different words. So one is rosa or rosas. So that one, it doesn't matter if it's masculine or feminine. It's just, it's rosa for singular, rosa for plural. And um, so that's one way of saying pink. So if you said uh, the pink sheet, la sabana rosa. Another way of saying pink is rosado. And that one does change depending on the gender. So it's rosado, rosados, rosada, rosadas. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're both the same. That's kind of a, uh, a regional thing. So you, some regions may have may, may tend to use rosado. Others would say maybe tend to use rosa. Um, but they're going to understand you regardless. So whichever one you want to use, it's fine. Blue, blue we already t talked about that one. Azul is for singular. Azules is for plural. So take a look at um, green, blue, and red. So those are pretty good examples here. So if if the adjective ends in our normal ending, o, o, s, a, or a, s, then it means that it changes depending on the gender and the uh, singular or plural. But if it ends in an e, or really any vowel, but especially the e, then all we do is we add an S to make it plural. Verde is for singular, masculine, or feminine. Verdes is for s plural, masculine, or feminine. Now, azul ends in a consonant. So to make it plural, we add an ES. Azul, azules. So those are the different kinds. So either you change the ending, which is the normal way, O, os, a, as. You add an S, like if it ends in an E, verde, verdes. Or you add an ES if it ends in a consonant, azul, azules. The word for orange, this is the longest one, the hardest one to pronounce, is anaranjado. Anaranjado. So go ahead and repeat that. Anaranjado. Anaranjados. Anaranjada. And anaranjadas. Say it a lot to yourself, actually, because it's a word that, you know, it's kind of common. You talk about the color orange on a reasonably common, you know, basis. And you want to kind of have it flow off your tongue. Anaranjado. Anaranjado. So try to practice that one on your own. Uh, now keep in mind that refers to the color orange. It does not refer to the orange, the fruit. Yellow. Amarillo, amarillos, amarilla, and amarillas. I think a lot of people know that one. Gray is gris or grises. So the singular ends in a consonant, an S in this case. So we have an ES to make it plural. Gris, grises. It doesn't matter the gender. Black, negro, negros. Negra, negras. That one a lot of people know as well. And white too. Blanco, blancos, blanca, blancas. Purple, you may, you may not know purple. It's morado. Morado, morados, morada, and moradas. The last one, this is another one that has different ways of saying it. So brown, marron and marrones, café, and cafés. So basically they're the same. I believe café is more a little more common in Mexico, whereas marrón and marrones, that's more common in Spain and a lot of Latin America. So they're interchangeable, really. All right. So those are the regular colors, but now we talk about colores del pelo, colors of hair, hair color. So there's a few, a few special words that refer specifically to hair color. So here over in the top left, we have ella tiene el cabello rubio. She has blonde hair. Rubio is blonde. Uh, notice that in the top I used the word pelo to mean hair. Here I've used cabello. They both mean hair. Uh, they are a little different. Cabello is specifically referring to your 
hair on your head, whereas pelo can just be a hair or any hair. But really, you can say red hair, cabello, or or I mean, you can say blonde hair, cabello rubio, or pelo rubio. It's not, it, they're both fine. Ella es rubia. So another difference here is that you can say she has blonde hair, or you can say she is blonde. That's pretty common with rubia. Uh, and actually, it's more common that you would say, ella es rubia, you're telling she's, a, she's blonde. And that one, so rubia refers to her, so we make it feminine. And then also, it can be a noun. La rubia tiene lentes. The blonde has glasses. So I'd say that's more common is to refer to her as a blonde. Instead of saying she has blonde hair, you say, ella, ella es rubia, she's blonde, or la rubia, you know, she's the blonde. So uh, that's more common than to just say she has a blonde hair. But um, brown hair is, ella tiene el pelo castaño, castaño is brown. And that one refers specifically to hair. It doesn't, you wouldn't really use castaño for other kinds of things like a, a crayon or a marker or something. It's It refers to hair color. Red hair, él es peligrojo, peligrojo. And so that refers to a person. It doesn't refer to hair. You wouldn't say, tiene el cabello peligrojo. That doesn't make sense because red hair, peligrojo means redhead or red-haired. So he is red-haired. Or you can say, el peligrojo está enojado. So the redhead is, is angry. And then down here, I've used morena. Ella es morena. And morena is dark also. It's specifically dark-skinned and dark-haired, dark-eyed. A morena is just a dark-skinned person. It's pretty common to refer to someone as a morena in Latin America. La morena es guapa. So the, the dark skin, the dark girl is, is pretty. Más adjetivos. Uh, so here's some more adjectives. There's a lot of them. I'm going to go through them a little bit quickly. But, um, you know, if you need to watch it again or, or write them down, you know, feel free to pause it or whatever. But anyway, here we go. Alto. That's for something is, some, a person is tall or something is high, like a high mountain or something. Antipatico. That's unpleasant, like an unpleasant person, a mean person. You can repeat after me, actually. Antipatico. Bajo. Bajo is someone who's short or uh, also something that's low, something that's low down. So um, remember that I'm giving you the singular masculine forms, but if it ends in O, you're going to change it depending on the noun. So a short girl would be, you know, una niña baja. You know, you're going to make it an A if it's a girl. Bueno means good. You probably know that one. Bonito. Pretty, good looking. Corto is short, as in short length, like a short hair. Or, you know, if a person is short, it's bajo, but if it's a short thing, like a short rope or something, it's corto. Delgado means thin. Difícil is difficult. So that one doesn't matter the gender, but if it's plural, you would add an ES, difíciles. Fácil is easy, fácil, and that's also plural be fáciles. Feo is ugly. Gordo, fat. Grande is big. You probably know that one too. Guapo, attractive, good looking. Importante is important, obviously. Inteligente, intelligent. So these ones, they both end in E. So to make them plural, you just add an S. Importantes, inteligentes. Again, interesante is interesting. You do add an S to make that plural. Interesantes, the gender doesn't matter. Joven, uh, so that one, to make it plural, you would add an ES. Jovenes. Largo is long. Like long hair, a long movie, a long rope. Malo is bad. 
mismo is same. That's really common. The same thing. La misma cosa. Mucho, a lot, many, much. Pequeño is small. Pobre is poor. Rico is rich. Simpatico, nice, a nice person. Tonto, silly, foolish, dumb, idiotic. And viejo is old. So that's a good number of adjectives. You know, um, remember, change the endings depending on the noun that it modifies. So most of them have four different forms, but some of them have just two. Okay, la posición del adjetivo. So where does it go? We talked about it already, but adjectives usually go after nouns. But that's not always the case. There are exceptions. Ojos azules, el ratón pequeño, el pastel dulce. So it comes right after the noun. Or if we're including it in as a sentence, la niña está sucia, the girl is dirty, then it goes in the same place as it does in English, just after the word for is. Okay, so ma bueno and malo can go before or after the noun. So they're really common adjectives, good and bad, obviously. And uh, so it really doesn't matter if they go ahead of the noun or behind the noun. Un hombre bueno, un buen hombre, a good man. It's the same. Notice we drop the O if it comes before the masculine singular form. Unos hombres buenos, unos buenos hombres, some good men. It's the same. There, it's, it's irrelevant where you put it. Una idea buena, una buena idea, unas ideas buenas, unas buenas ideas, idea means idea, obviously, a good idea, some good ideas. So I just included those to show you that it doesn't matter where you put it, it's the same. The one exception is that if it's before a singular and masculine noun, you drop the O. It's not un bueno hombre, it's un buen hombre. Same thing for bad. Un día malo, a bad day. Un mal día. So again, we've dropped the, the O if it comes before a singular and masculine noun. Unos días malos, unos malos días. Una semana mala, a bad week. Una mala semana. Unas semanas malas, unas malas semanas. So it doesn't matter where you put it before or after. You conjugate or you change the noun just like uh, anything else. You wanted to agree with the, uh, with the noun that it modifies. Uh, just remember that you drop the O if it comes before a singular masculine noun. Okay, there are some other nouns that can go before the noun, but it changes their meaning slightly. And when, usually, if it's in front of the noun, they have a more figurative meaning. So let's take a look at some examples here. Un hombre grande is a big man. He's literally big. Un hombre grande. Un gran hombre is a great man. So someone who's really important, like big part of history. Un gran hombre. And again, notice that grande becomes gran when it comes to place before any singular noun. Okay, the other, so a couple other here. Un hombre pobre. The man's literally poor. He has no money. Un pobre hombre. An unfortunate man. So, like, the poor guy, he's, he's poor. You know, he's not literally poor, but you say, oh, the poor guy, he, this happened to him. He's unfortunate. So it's a little more figurative. Un coche nuevo. It's a brand new car, so it's literally new. And un nuevo coche, it's a recently acquired car, so it's new to you. It's not necessarily new, but it's the new car. It's the recently acquired car. And the th same thing with old. El carro viejo, the old car, it's literally an old car. It's, it was made many years ago. El viejo carro, the car before the current one. So it's not this car. It's el viejo carro. Uh, it's the old one, the one that I'm, the one we had before this one. And notice that coche and carro, they both mean car. Okay, some practica. 
So I say, first question for you, I have, ¿Cómo es la reina? How is the queen? Now, notice I used S. I didn't say, ¿Cómo está la reina? That would be, how is she doing right now? Is she, is she clean? Is she happy? Is she, you know, how, how is her condition at this time? I'm asking, ¿Cómo es? So, describe her. What's her, what's her appearance? You know, things like that. So, here we go. Let's start the first one. I've got two options for you. A es guapa o fea. So what do you think we go there? Is she pretty or ugly? Ella es guapa. Yeah, she's pretty. Okay. Ella es gorda o delgada. Which one? Delgada. Is she, is she fat or skinny? She's skinny. She's very skinny, really. Okay. Tiene el cabello blank. We would go there. Well, we're asking for the color of her hair. Cabello is hair. Tiene el cabello negro. Ella es rica o pobre? Which one? Rica. She's rich. She's the queen. They're generally rich. And the last one. Ella tiene los ojos. So we want to color here again. Negros black eyes that she has black eyes there you can put any color you want there just make sure that you have it plural so azules cafes whatever color you want to put but make sure it's plural okay como es el ladrón como es el ladrón how's the thief so not how's he doing but how is he what's his appearance like okay el es Guapo or feo? Feo. He's ugly. Él es viejo o joven? Which is it? Viejo. He's old. Él es simpático o antipático? Is he nice or mean? Antipático. I'm assuming he has kind of a grouchy face there. Él es rico o pobre? Pobre. He's probably poor. And then the last one. Él es lento o rápido? So that one wasn't on our list, but lento means slow. Rápido is fast, like rapid. So, is he lento o rápido? Él es rápido. He's fast. Como es el hombre? How is the man? Again, not como está el hombre. How is he doing? What's his current condition? It's como es. What's he like? What are some permanent features of the man? So why don't you make a few sentences? If you want, you can pause it and uh, maybe make four or three sentences about him. How is he? What's his appearance? Yeah. All right, so hopefully you have some of those. I'm going to give you the examples that I made. There's other ones you could do. El hombre es delgado, he's thin. Él tiene el cabello castaño y corto. He has brown and short hair. Tiene los ojos azules, he has blue eyes. Y él es alto. He's probably pretty tall there, I can't really tell that well. but. And last thing, él tiene una barba, so he has a beard. Barba is beard. Okay, como son las niñas? Como son las niñas? How are the girls? What's their appearance? So maybe take a few minutes if you want to pause it and make some sentences. Um, I can hopefully have some. I'm going to go over my examples. Las niñas son jóvenes. They're young. Notice that whenever joven becomes jóvenes, we have to put an accent over that O there. Otherwise, if we didn't have the accent, it'd say jovenes. We don't want to say jovenes. We want to say jovenes. So we put an accent on there. Ellas son bonitas. They're pretty. They're nice. They're, they're cute girls, you know. Tienen el cabello castaño. They have dark hair. They have brown hair. 
tienen el cabello largo, also, they have long hair. Tienen los ojos cafés, they have brown eyes or, or marrones, they have brown eyes. Ellas son pequeñas, they're small. So, there's lots you could do. They're thin, ellos son delgadas. Just make sure that your uh, that your adjectives match the noun that they're uh, describing. So, for example, ellas son bonitas. It ends in an as because we're describing the girls. In the next one, tienen el cabello castaño. Castaño ends in an o because we're not describing the girls. We're describing their hair, which is singular and masculine. Y tú, cómo eres tú? So. How are you? You know, not how are you doing? What is your a general appearance or characteristics about you that are permanent? So um, maybe take a couple minutes and make five sentences about yourself. Um, you know, you can pause the video, but hopefully you have that. I'm going to go over just some examples that I made. Soy pelirrojo. I'm redheaded. No soy muy alto. I'm not very tall. I'm kind of just average. Soy simpático. Nice, I think I'm nice anyway. Tengo los ojos azules. I have blue eyes. No soy viejo. I'm not old. So just make sure that your ending on your adjectives match yourself. So if you're a girl, you'd say alta, simpática. And make sure that you're using soy because you're, you're saying I am. That's soy. Okay, well, that's it. Hasta pronto. So there's our adjectives. Um, we've got pretty much all the parts of the sentence, almost all of them anyway. So pretty soon we're going to be really putting together some major sentences. But now I'm really happy with the way the vocab is going. Hopefully you have a good handle on it. Feel free to watch the vocabs again. I'll link them here again just in case you need them. And um, see you soon. Thanks for watching.